Hello, everybody. I'm Tyler Edlin, and I'm finally back again with the talents of Mr. Adam Duff. Yes, that's me. And we have a handful of uh, challenge entries to critique today. There's 11 in total. And the <laughs> theme is lizard men ambushing a market. Something very yeah. straightforward, something very focused. And yeah. I think um, I think that's good for the challenge this, this, uh, um, this month. And to get out of the way, now the next challenge, which I don't have a firm date on, but I assume it's about a month from now, you know, maybe like November 2nd or something like that. Uh, the next challenge theme is uh, uh, ghouls and, and ghosts. Mm. You know, very kind of spooky. Nice. Kind of do what yeah, you with it. with it. Make an illustration. Let's make it an illustration challenge. So no concepts. Just do an yeah. illustration of ghouls and ghosts doing whatever they do. Yeah. <laughs> so a little more, a little more flexibility. Fun. My and, favorite subject, yeah. Yes. All right. So let's start with... Woody. Woody. Wood, wood. All right. All right. All right, Wood. Woody. This is Woody. this is coming together. Yeah. 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 Um, you're on point with the references. Um, and and you know your shapes are actually they they're your your composition and your lighting. It's it's reading very well. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, a lot of the the problem is like some of more and not like there's some technical things and then there's some more subjective things for me. Uh, I would say uh, too much of the canvas for me is just wasted up mm. above focusing on a lot of this and then yeah. you kind of cropped out the people when like the scene is about these people in terror. So yeah. To me, it'd be yeah. a little bit more of a logical decision to bring the whole frame down. Yeah. And then you could have brought and, and focused more on that action, mo more on this guy as a terror. And since this mm -hmm. is such a chaotic scene, adding even, and I'm going to probably have to say this with a lot of entries this month, like this is the perfect opportunity to have like a little bit of that dynamic Dutch Dutch tilt, that Dutch angle. Mm -hmm. to True. Really, eh? it'll, and allow you to show a little bit more. That's that's some of the benefit of it. Yeah. Not because it looks fancy or something, but it, it's the way it kind of conveys information to the viewer. You know, it would really help. Um, mm -hmm. Adam, you want to chime in here? I'm going to zoom in a bit so everybody can see it just a bit better. Yeah, well, like you said, uh, uh, like the expression goes, fill the frame with that which you love, right? So the, the real selling point to this piece is the panic. That's where the emotional pitch of this is on the, on, the, on the civilians. So getting them up in the front, and furthermore, I wouldn't throw them into the shadow. It's, you're kind of suggesting almost as if they're, they're, uh, uh, they're under some kind of a... a some overhead thing that's putting them in the shadow and you'd probably want to find an excuse to throw some light on those faces because that's what's selling the the panic of the shot right so a lot of it's kind of hidden in the dark there and uh Imagine what else could I nice say? shapes of light hitting yeah hitting all those faces yeah on the shoulders really like to blow it. these out like a lot. yeah exactly like, think yeah. of like how you can group those group these as as shapes yeah, and that will that will really help, you know, a lot yeah, of like kind of like you did with a lizard. Bring that into bring that into all of this. I'd also Light. be careful too. Um, how you're framing things with your composition, like you have that that the main uh, bad guy lizard is right in front of a big heavy pillar, and that's competing. Mm -hmm. That's that's really uh, pulling the weight away from the lizard. I would I would probably shift it over to frame him, and be careful with the value of the head because you've got that sandy beige on the lizard's lit side of his head on top against a sandy beige building in the background so that kind of flattens them against the background a little bit we lose a bit of that separation yeah like I'd this guy is a side. great um this thing keeps tweaking out on me this is a great focal element this this one lizard guy and mm -hmm. basically he's kind of sandwiched in with a lot mm -hmm. of this other stuff like you know, we could barely see his weapon because it's riding a tangent of that floor. Yeah. Also hitting a tangent of the uh, the wagon there, and so he's not getting his room to kind of ex be expressed. I think the way mm -hmm. that could have that energy that would really make it um, better. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 getting there for sure. Uh, yeah. The, you have you know a nice opportunity to put a lot of um, bounce light. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the shadows feel too dead basically think of like condensing yeah. the information in your highlights the colors in your information color happens in shadows you get fill lights you get bounce lights 
all the light in the in the the direct light in the sunlight that only comes from the sun so it's very narrow in terms of the color and the scope of it but since mm -hmm. you have a lot of this in shadows play all of that up like a symphony um but besides that the colors in the in the background aren't uh, they get a little white and pasty yeah and that, and then of course you know if it's an illustration to bring it up to a portfolio level you'll either have to stylize the <laughs> stylize the whole thing so it's so simple or if you're going for realism which i think you might be going for here you're gonna have to um probably up the rendering uh quite a bit on a lot of the the faces yep and use reference for that kind of stuff too you know because the lighting looks a little bit too much like you tried to figure it out from your head where getting that kind of reference will help solve your lighting and rendering issues on its own. And it'll save you the trouble of having to try to best guess. Um, that's my personal suggestion for that. Yeah, for sure. Really nice, though. Very nicely done. Yeah, it's, Very it's ambitious one of your piece. stronger entries, though. You're, you're pushing things. Yeah. All right, Raven. They, he, but I, which I believe he said he was not able to complete it. Okay. But anyways, we have a... This is very en enigmatic. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's because it's unfinished. But even if I'm just taking this from what the information I see, I don't think this as a shape or an element is conveying mm -hmm. enough information to us. Yeah. Uh, this, if the, I don't know if this is a good guy. I don't know if this is a bad guy. I don't know what the intent and the focus is of these two characters. And I don't understand, you know, and that's good that you kind of presented it even at this level because, like, uh, there's these multiple things going on. Like, I don't understand the relationship between these guys and the background, the whole city. Mm -hmm. Like, why are they so far above uh, everything else? Uh, what is their relationship, you know, to yep. that? Uh, it almost like there's, there's like, two things going on. You have, have, like, something you want to express with the foreground, and then there's this concept of the city and the background and the world, you know, itself, which could be entirely its own thing because they're, mm -hmm. they're very disconnected right now. I know you're like, I, this looks like, I think you're a suggesting snake? that there's people or something way, way down there kind of entering the city there. That's but people or is that a yeah, snake I th on I think it's, Adam, I think it's supposed to be a groups of people marching to the gates. Oh, okay. So see, okay. like, but on that note, that kind of adds to the problem is like, I don't know if these people are supposed to be a part of them. I don't know if these are the lizard men supposed to be waiting in ambush for them because their their poses and their body language don't express. I that. think that I think that squiggly line, the line off leading off into the gates, yes, but that foreground dark area is actually I think that's a banister. It, yeah, it that the guys be. railing, the guys leaning on, and a snake. I think that's a snake or too something sitting on the, on the building. Too many questions. It's hard. Well, that's. One, I Raven. think that's the. I think that's the fundamental issue. We're not sure. <laughs> uh, a little bit more light, addings a bit more light to that area, and a bit. Um, that would definitely make all the difference there. But that that uh, city idea, you know, that's a badass city. Like the, the world seems awesome. It, yeah, just yeah. Find what you're you want to focus on and, and work on expressing yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right this is okay. this is pretty cool. Uh, sorry, I gotta I gotta get the name. I didn't. Uh, what is? Uh, Zenitive. 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 Yeah. All right. This is cool. This is this is getting there too. You have a lot of it's, information going on, and I and think we, just yeah. switching up, you know, some of the value range on on a lot of this uh, can do a lot for it. Yeah. Yeah, separate that tent for sure. You like, know, if you look just, just in terms like, of values, you're going to see how the that snake character and his leg create a tangent with the tent, which is the same value and color, which makes it, at first glance there's a real confusion there between the snake's leg and the tent top. There, it kind of blends gonna, into each yeah, other. The, the, value the tangent. first thing I'm going to do is separate all of this stuff, all the action yeah. from the background, and then we can move. Then we there can you move go. those elements. So there's that shape. We'll cut out this. This is very, and, and that's the thing. It's like it is very detailed. Um, yeah. You have like a lot going on in here, which isn't inherently a bad thing, but definitely like on a structural side of things is something you may want to consider mm -hmm. addressing before putting little highlights on weapons and things like that. Uh, just a small, small recommendation. All right. So let me actually duplicate a lot of this all right and now okay what we were going to do is bring that down so bring down 
basically the the value range of all of that. So it it's grouping a lot of that information together. Mm -hmm. Is what I would do, and then I'd even I'd even ramp up some of these reds and and magentas a bit too, because it's kind of like I'm getting a little bit of that almost like sunset time of day, and then that leaves mm -hmm. you that right. Th that's going to leave you with the uh, the remainder of this. So let me just remove this black bar so I can keep within there and basically what I would do is I'd come in and, and show that sun beaming and you know gleaming down on you know a lot of this and then work mm -hmm. out you know work out the shapes kind of from there grab this it's too much there we go yeah bringing some okay. of that light and then what I'm going to do is see that's like too too much but there we go soften that and then come in with like basically want to feel i all my brushes reset this week adam so i'm like i'm so uh not that i need Still a lot of brushes but i'm, I'm disoriented because i'm muscle memory is telling me to go and click my brush and move it in certain places <laughs> to basically for things that that don't currently exist right now see like yeah those, yeah. Air, those are all default air brushes you're now, always right? resetting your brush set every every week it's crazy let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. I just need like a regular airbrush. Here we go. Right, so coming into there, like having some light coming through, and we can play this up after. But imagine <laughs> like you see, you have gates and structures back there for sure. Uh, but imagine now uh, with that, if we if you take them and you find a nice line, it doesn't need to literally be here, but uh, basically upping the, uh, the scale of of the uh, the gate and stuff tremendously and start to basically kind of fill it in with um this light and uh, shadow you know information so you can see it on the horizon and then basically we can we like you did i would um you know paint the light you know right into that um as well where the shapes are but just starting you know at least from this point you know with that silhouette coming in yeah. and then showing this is not like how I typically want to do this with this awful kind of airbrush look. But now, so you can figure out, you know, some of those core shapes, mm -hmm. you get that to read. Um, but see, it, it'll, it's kind of upping the scale on everything a little bit, a little bit better. Uh, and that will help kind of keep and ground that focus. And now, since everything's dark too, you can also select, uh, and I'll do this very very kind of garish or ugly like right now but you can grab like these nice highlights see on your character and kind of push and kind of push those so i guess making like a selection you know just on the corner right there for example can do a big adjustment on that you know like why, why color dodge is probably not the best way but basically really feel like the lighting hitting some of these shapes on these mm -hmm. you know on these uh focal point characters will make them you know really pop out so see like again like you mentioned right at the beginning right he is having trouble he's having trouble reading against that tent and everything but you know mm -hmm. he came in here and started yeah. painting on this nice light right coming coming in from the sun again this very there you kind, go. very kind of ugly sort of way but it will um, see like super yellow, but yeah, and shine it on the guy on the ground too. Yeah, because he's uh, gets dark on dark. You don't see the victim, right? So you want to be so able like, to see the victim. Think as well. of like on this character where you could push, like you know, you could leave the rest of him in shadow for the most part. Like that'd be mm -hmm. fine. Make maybe had like a little bit of light there and on the staff, but that's just grouping and simplifying things down a lot. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I get even like a little bit darker and simplify some of the background. It brings some of this dust and smoke, basically behind, um, you know, behind the characters too. Gosh, I, I want just like a normal airbrush, which is like, I can't find it. Got all these other brushes. I don't know. Maybe it's because the noise is there. But you know, bring in some of like these lighter tones from over here, and then you can get those shapes popping out back there again i'd have to go and make a selection but that's how i'd kind of work on some of that structural stuff mm -hmm. you know with the focus and it, it, it kind of fill it with light 
in life. Um, there's some weird tangents with the, the character pose, like the, the head is meeting the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And there's, I mean, there's some little things like that. But uh, anything you want to add to that at this point, Adam? No, I think I'd just basically be recycling the same stuff. Yeah, no, that pretty much covers it. I think the only thing that was bugging me a bit was the sep was the knee to the tent where I probably yeah, would have right wanted here. to separate that tent. Yeah, I know. And put I a bit of negative space there, but that's about it. I definitely agree. And you can, it's not not too bad to to create some uh, light and some subtle some subtle separation on that. You know, just kind of pushing that like it's getting hit. Yeah, there we go. You know, with nice. some of that light, it'll it'll knock it back there, and then even so, take. I could just, I love working on these sort of things. You know, mm -hmm. just take everything that is back there, you know, excluding the shape of light, and you can even knock all of this back a little bit further, you know, in, in your levels and everything. So, oh, well, not that one, but kind of like this one. So you kind of toning down that information. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. A lot, lot, of, lot of things you can do. Um, yeah. And then, you know, look at how you can see this light. Gosh, I said I was going to stop, and I keep going. But I keep I keep <laughs> yeah, getting inspired. I keep seeing these ideas. Yeah, like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you keep the way you can you can design the shapes of light in the scene to have you know certain mm, rhythms yeah. and mm, certain nice. design. Like you can make this scene one of those showstoppers. You know, if you just it just needs the a uh, little bit of light catching that guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like, like it just needs that structure with the lighting and stuff. But uh, it's very cool. <laughs> Very nice, yeah. But I think this is of, also uh, a great example so, too that, like, you know, structurally speaking, at this core, like, you can't you can't necessarily cover up weaker or poor structure or foundation, you know, with your base image and drawing with lots and lots of detail because it's only ever going to be as strong as like the underlying drawing and how the shapes are grouped. Yeah. But that, that's just, uh, you know, something like a lot of us, we go through that and we, we try to cover up um, things with detail and try, think mm -hmm. that details can fix things. I'll mention, I'm going to throw this in. Storytelling wise, you brought the story exactly to the right spot. We, it's, I'd say out of all the pieces, you probably told yep. the story the best because you brought that action up to her face. We know exactly what's going on. So big thumbs up for that. Hmm, and this, no, is this is capturing nice. that moment of ambush. You know, which is in the, there you go. one of the key words I we use in the description of the mm -hmm. uh, uh, the image, and you know the color is pretty nice and and harmonized in this too. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think you know making it a little bit more subtle in this case I think will will help you out. But I mean, on on the technical side of things, this is probably one of the the least problematic images i see out of the lot like mm -hmm. uh, this is almost like too obvious in regards like here's a go a cool light here's a warm light and you can kind of see those at play uh I i'd kind of work a little bit more towards the subtle side of that you know pair pair a lot of that back i mean it's nice to you like you're selling the form it looks cylindrical and it looks round but it's almost just like too too heavy-handed mm -hmm. <laughs> with with that approach from for at least my personal taste so I'd, I'd kind of pair it back a bit and use like more subtle uh, nuances of like uh, neutralized yellows and desaturated tones. Like you don't when 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 showing shadows, a lot of the subtleties entirely played up in the neutrals and in the grays. Some people call them grays. So if you have grays made up of a lot of these colors without directly going to the blue range, that'll fix your palette even further. I'm on lighten, and that wasn't making a mark. So see, like, I would say the front of the character here, um, for this omni light that's in the center here, he's getting the character's getting way too much light, and, and it's mm. even though your tree looked very round, your character, you know, the character looks very flat and graphic mm. in a way. Yep. Which I mean, if you, if you get lucky, or if you want like the band aid fix. That could be as simple as coming in here with like a shadow tone and an airbrush on overlay mode, and you could get that. You know, you could you could really start faking. Oh, not on that. Uh, I think a wrong layer. It looks very ugly like that. Let me bring it up. This is such a handsome lizard. But see, kind of like really getting in there and, and darkening up. You know, some of those tones and ranges. 
so that you can sell all the form on on the lizard guy himself and then you can push the lighting on it you know like you're doing and then push uh, see this would all be bounce light so here's the core shadow you know, you're gonna have occluded light all in here so you're you're almost in a way showing too much you know find a way to yeah. filter a lot of that out um less is more mm-hmm mm-hmm like I wouldn't I'd even maybe go as bold to you know take the the back end of the the trees here like the tree line like all this shape you know in there you could even probably get that I know I'm not going to select those streamers but you could probably get a lot of that even like a lot darker back there just you know to kind of create more you know more of those subtleties and and mm -hmm. basically have the uh those tents pop out just a bit too yeah it's just kind of grouping and, and simplifying a lot of your stuff. And don't be afraid to do that as well with your leaves. Your leaves are getting a very, for my personal taste anyway, like very heavy with, with, the, with the texture and not selling enough form. Kind of like what's going on here. But, you know, besides that, you're capturing a story very well. Everything reads, you know, everything reads very, very clearly. I think it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like maybe in a way what I would do is... This I didn't even think of this before. Maybe Adam, let me know if you agree or not. I, it's fine either way, but like maybe just upscaling all this information in there. Yeah, bring it a little closer to uh, closer to us. Will will heighten your sense of drama and little tweaks like that. They can go such a long way. Mm -hmm. The other, while you're on that, the other thing I would add is um, he, the character, the main human who's about to be ambushed, uh, compositionally kind of put his head below those streamers. Mm -hmm. And what I would do to make him more of a focal point is I'd scale him up a little bit to put his head above them, kind of bring his head and shoulders above it so that it separates him from the background. It doesn't make him part of the background. It's showing him separating from it. So just yeah. a little, just scaling him up and moving his head above there would definitely uh, compositionally help a lot. Plus, you have all that negative space above the streamers. It would justify it a bit more. Yeah, I mean, we're we're calling out a lot of other people for the the use of space, yeah. and yeah, I, yeah, I think you're definitely right on that. Just bringing everything kind of full in, and then yeah, look at that. That separates them. Perfect. And then you just basically need to up. Just lots of scale. Now, yeah, lots of scale now she's things. Beauty, you know. Lots yeah, of scale little, things, thing, but yeah. like I think once the the scales adjusted, mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna look it's gonna look awesome. So you bring that over, and then you, you could even take this and remove right some of that that uh, information too on that, and really add that yeah. mystery. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's the Adam and Tyler version of this. Oh. This same idea, same information. Just heightening that drama quite a bit. Yeah, I yeah. like it, Adam. Yeah, I like it too. I, it's, a very, it's a very exciting piece. All right. Uh, Nander. Nander. All right. So this is. I know he's posting in the Discord that this is uh, very much a work in progress. Yeah. So I like at least let us know what you would do if you kept working on it. So we'll keep this brief. Let's just talk about. The things that could set this shot up uh, to to improve it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I like I, I, I like the fact that sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Tyler. No, go I for think it. The fact that it's unfinished is actually a good lesson for everybody who's watching. We should feel excited and we should feel a sense of success even in this preliminary, non-detailed phase. If this can read well compositionally, you're on the right track. So, detail or not, it's. A lot of food for thought that we can still discuss, right? Sorry, go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, no, I was going to say a very similar thing. Like, look at how everything's presented in such a simple yep. way, a graphic way, mm -hmm. and you know, clearly defined shapes. That's something, regardless of how much time you sink into this, don't lose some of that. Now, mm -hmm. you mentioned down here about adding lighting. Um, just decide right off. Like, are you going to go overcast or you do want to go direct? You can add yeah. some direct light to this, but it doesn't. It doesn't inherently need it. It doesn't have to mm -hmm. have it. You can make it work like this. You just have to kind of structure in the values. Um, you know, a little bit. Watch like a lot of battle scenes or war movies or even uh, fighting reenactments, like or you know, at medieval fairs and stuff. Get a lot of those photos, and you can you can 
definitely convey a lot of information and a lot of light, even in an mm-hmm. overcast scene. But yeah, overcast scenes can be a little bit more difficult to tackle because of that. They have their own challenges. But I like and I but I like this sense of action. Like that's uh, there, there's some stiff things about it, but like him just leaping up like that, like that's a very nice heightened sense of drama for mm-hmm. the scene. I think, I think it's on the right track for there. I yeah. there's 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 some weird things like you know, let's just call the tangent police out for a second. Yeah, I'd adjust like where that foot is against the background there. I'd against uh, you know this line right here is separating that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like little things like that that you know aren't you know, maybe like the the most ideal positioning but you know i think this is certainly heading in the right direction maybe to do something uh look at like some spider-man poses there's got to be like mm-hmm. you know you, there's ways to push the angles and stuff on on the legs and stuff and then think of like what that action you know of the hands are doing and how that can you know bring out the energy you know of, of the of the core because it looks like he's just kind of ready to do a cannonball he's bringing that <laughs> ener- you know like he's bringing that energy inward right adam like if, if in the pose and in the energy he's getting that outwards you know yeah. outwards is what you kind of want uh to aim on that not not in um so i think you'd have to resolve uh, you know that other arm May- definitely like the way this arm is positioned like i know you're kind of going like you know, up like that. I don't know what angle the camera's capturing, but you know, the posing on it, it's kind of like halfway there. Mm-hmm. I'd add to uh, pay attention to uh, volumes, to shapes, to limbs that are not on the visible side of the body. So that arm that's facing us that we can see is well drawn. You've got the muscles and everything. And then the other one, if you actually look at it objectively, is just a little stub sticking out with a knife. In the hand, right? We're not actually sensing that full arm in the shot, so there, it's almost as like most of the arm is missing, in a sense. Can you see that too, Tyler? Mm, yeah. No, that's a yeah. Good, that's a that's a very nice way of wording it. What yeah. Word? Uh, um, what else would I add to that? Uh, also, think in terms of movement and animation. Like, try to actually visualize this character leaping into the air. What would happen to the tail if he was leaping? Well, there would be some follow through in the tail. It wouldn't be curled up. It would be pushing back because you want to create that sense of that he's moving forward. Think of like a squirrel tail, the way it'll flow, right? Um, so that tail up is suggesting that he just jumped off a roof or something. It's hard to tell, right? Yeah, that's what I was saying about the energy, Adam. Everything is just kind of coiling inwards yeah. when it, and, it, and, it, and it loses that energy Yeah. Um, because of that. Yeah, we could take. Like have one leg leaping up. One of the things you can do is actually take some, take a spatula or something in your hand, and do that gesture. Jump in the air in a stabbing motion and see how your body jumps off the ground. Get off your feet. Get off your butt and actually practice the movement. You'll see that certain things here, uh, in terms of the physics of the human body, don't function. Right? They they aren't actually functional in terms of human movement. So. Do it yourself and see what your body does and try to capture that movement in your drawing as well. That'll help a lot. This is another scene perfect for the Dutch angle. And work yeah. on these shapes, these movements, you know, and these the flow of, of how everything's going to read and go. Yeah. You know, push, you know, get the acting into these characters. Over-exaggerate lots of this. Having yeah. tumbling back with the legs flying outwards. Trying to, you know, protect the child, which is going, ah, you know, like, go over and above on a lot of that. And I think it'll help you out a lot. Mm-hmm. And then you could see you could have like the flying guy in the background over here. Yeah. And then you know work out compositionally. Oh yeah, if we want to show, you know, more of you know, the market stuff, you can add that in or imply it back there. Like, but you know that's kind of how I'd frame everything, anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. But, cool. Yeah, in there. Martin. Martin. Oh, we actually Martin. stared at this for a little bit, and we we were there's it's we had a bit of a a love confusion relationship with this shot because there's a lot to appreciate. I love how you brought that action right up close. Yeah, like there's a very really intimate the moment in scene with this. Yeah. Um, as far as it being a, it's more of a subtle bullyish type of takeover scene it's not so much of an action scene which is cool you can appreciate that 
Uh, it's more of a psychological kind of like he's coming yeah, to a, pick up his, his payment type of thing. Yeah, right? it's very interesting. I like it. Uh, compositionally, with the values and the structures and the placements, there were several things you can do that are very simple fixes. Tyler, Tyler and I were looking at this before that would completely transform this piece and make it clear. Like, go ahead, Tyler, because I know you you were really going over it well, before. Well, like I said, the, the scenes about this, and if we even design, divine, uh, dis <laughs> divide, uh, divine, put it. <laughs> Put a dividing line right here. Nothing on this side of the canvas is helping this side of the canvas. And that's like the easiest yeah. way I could word it. Like we want a lot of these shapes and a lot of these lines and a lot of this direction and emphasis to help, you know, to help this or to help this. But a mm -hmm. lot of this is just not. Uh, yeah. And it's creating more problems at this stage than anything, right? You got like a big one here. There's mm -hmm. not an overlap or a separation between the arm. I mean, that's that's yeah. that's the worst kind of tangent right there because it's directly affecting uh, the uh, focal point, uh, the yeah. focal character. But like that as a shape, it you know it's a, it's competing as the same size as this shape, which is also mm -hmm. the the same general size as this shape, which is the same. There's a lack of uh, uh, contrast and variety within a lot of these these uh micro shapes within the scene and that that's mm -hmm. adding a little bit to the a little bit a little bit more to the to the problem and then there's just kind of how this is tucked back there and it doesn't feel in entirely resolved yet and the way the bridge is framing like i get that's like the uh, the corner of a bridge but i don't think that it's it's necessarily like the best way to even show it or or even have this it's like if you want like uh, dark and or to lighten up right the with some nice ambient light so like you'd probably want to have the the darker the inside of that bridge I'm trying to like I'm on overlay mode apparently still probably have that the inside of the bridge you know be on that side so that will push it'll push all these colors and forms outward and then you know recede a lot of this so it was just like a weird, you know, an awkward choice of crop. And then that would be, you know, that could go out and over there. See now, like, and even moving that. Like, yeah. see, we're, we're making and we're designing this nice shape to, to frame, you know, the character with. And, and that, that's kind of more where I'd, I'd fix a lot of these things. What, what was your thoughts on this? Uh, pretty much the same. I would also I would add to that is you know in times like this, think about your rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is designed to keep your your focus more towards the middle and off the sides. And one of the things you've done is you've stuck the main character in the smack dab middle, and the character he's acting with in the corner, which is a composition. You've basically taken everything and just shoved it in the corner, just by taking that either a cropping off a bit of the back or. Creating a bit more of an extension on the on the left side no, I will, agree. will better center these characters. There you go. Look and at stick, look at that orientation. Yeah. Much more in, uh, much more visually suitable than like yeah. a you're you're almost at a square composition. You know what? I would even add to crop off some of the right to bring that rule of thirds right into onto your main middle character there, and you'll have look at that two characters smacked up on your rule of thirds, and there you have it. Bullseye. Yeah, like that would, it's all about framing mm -hmm. and staging your idea. It yep. helps really create that focus and everything. See, like you could have lines coming, you know, upward. Where is it? Like up go. here for the tent. You have there more you room for your, oh, come on. I, I, I got to make a new layer, I guess. Right. Framing a lot of that. And it will add just so 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 much more to this mm -hmm. like you, this you can keep and you can keep even a shape like that yeah and it will, it's like, a nice it's a nice camera i love that camera angle right by the basket you're really thinking like a like a cinematographer right mm -hmm. i like that about it Creates this nice is why like yesterday shape. i got a couple head turns and i posted some of my sketches from yesterday in the discord and they look just like this nonsenses oh, really? of yeah. shapes like just colored everywhere because I, mm -hmm. I one of the biggest things I've learned in the last two years if you can formulate your idea on an abstract level first yeah and separate all senses of the literal from it it'll tell you if things are working or not yeah absolutely. but it, it's, it's taken me 
it's taken me like you know almost like nine years of a career to figure that out yeah well they didn't say that at art school i'll tell you that no all right jay white unfinished market ambush we definitely have drama, and you've got the faces yeah. up close, but when the, you made a fundamental mistake with this composition, and that's basically you have all of your characters running off screen. <laughs> you've, everybody's just about to leave the, the image, so it's almost like the, we're looking at the last second of a scene rather than the beginning of it, right? So that's definitely See, I like, I like I like this say. comp here, Adam, because it shows a little bit more of the people. Yeah. And like, yeah. let's just say if you did like a Frazetta move, right, and you have mm -hmm. like lots of people... And a lot of their arms and a lot of their their gestures and movement are all mm -hmm. subtly kind of creating a flow. If you yep. have your character separate your main villain, you know you got to empower this character. Mm -hmm. Paint them in the background with like almost in in a scale, you know, where yep. you can where we can see them, you know, at, at the back end of this, and then you mm -hmm. know, they'll have he'll have his buddies and his his other people chasing him Perfect. behind yeah. him and then yeah. you know your your negative shape would have just been limited to basically this yeah and this and then you could imply and show the market with, with within reason within those two shapes yeah and that i think would have fixed everything so in other words the character's way too close these aren't creating enough of a direction um but yeah it's it's a it's a very dynamic uh you know, at night too, fresh take on this. Yep. But notice too, notice too how, the importance of having those faces up close to the camera. Like I'd say, out of all the pieces, compositionally, you needed to tweak it, but dramatically, we see the intensity of the emotion, and that's what's bringing us the emotional pitch of the shot. So remember that's it's important to remember that as well. Yeah, uh, just group. You know, your shadows and your light areas. Like, that's the first thing I do when mm. I'm ever sitting down to um, compose a shot, regardless of how simple or complex. Just decide mm -hmm. where that shape is going to be divided for what's going to be in light and what's going to be a shadow. And see, very mm -hmm. similarly there you go. Yeah, in this Rosetta exactly painting, everything is clearly defined because of yeah. that. And it really can help that impact and that drama. Mm -hmm. See, shadow shape, shadow shape, highlight shape, shadow shape. You can you could trace them. A kindergartner could trace those shapes. In this, you do have some shapes of negative space, but with on the form of like the characters here, character, like you, it, that's what gets lost a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that thumbnail on the bottom right I find is actually quite successful. Mm -hmm. and you lost a bit in translation, I guess. And I think if you just commit, like, elongated it, you know, make it a vertical image, put your character, mm -hmm. like we just talked about, up there, that'll help it yeah. even more. All right, Alex, how you doing? All right. All right, so let's have a look. We have a bird's eye view this time. That's nice. I like a, a nice uh, change of pace from, like, mm -hmm. not every shot needs to be a Dutch angle underneath the guy's, you know, <laughs> boots to yeah. kind of... Uh. Like, this shot, you know, with anything else I'm going to say, this shot can work. And I like... Mm -hmm. And I think this is a little bit more successful. Again, like the last case, your sketch I think works kind of better than the the actual finish here. And that's because you're thinking in your grouping of relationships in space, adding mm -hmm. lots of detail into these characters, and then further, you know, adding in more of this. Stuff. Like it just makes the flaws kind of come out a little bit more obvious. When it, I think at, you know definitely at this level, it is working a little bit better because of that. Mm -hmm. Like because the, mm -hmm. the perspective on these is entirely made up. And it really looks like that. And then some of this stuff gets a little too detailed. Hmm? You still there? I'm here. I'm thinking. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Sorry. The audio cut off. Uh, what do I think? Uh, my main thing that's really kind of grabbed a couple of things. The, uh, the character, just to give him a little bit more space around the feet to frame him a bit better because he's mm -hmm. kind of creating a bit of a tension with the crowd. It kind of that exists both in the thumb below it and in the drawing itself. Um, I would also be weary when you have main characters, the lizard, the bad lizard guys, you want them to pop. So the fact that they have red in them is great, but don't put like the lizard, the lizard at the highest one, red against orange, you lose that guy. That kind of blends them into the crowd and incidentally blends 
the lizards into the crowd. And you don't want to do that. You want them to be the bad guys, and you want the crowd to kind of get lost, right? You want to mute them down and get them lost. So something to be careful with. Those reds are eye grabbers. So you want to make sure that it's helping to direct your attention to the right place and not scatter it. Because all those little red coats and cloaks are kind of, they're randomly placed, which doesn't help with the eye flow of the piece, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like a matter of grouping a lot of this stuff and then deciding, you know, this is going to be direct light coming in into the scene. How can I use those shapes to really hey. heighten the drama here of this character? Mm -hmm. And how can how can you make shapes and patterns and rhythms of that light to come in to really, you know, sell this? And like, how can you? Because you don't the light doesn't need to be like a hundred percent spot on. You design the shapes of light mm -hmm. so that it it can express your idea. Like, how do these shapes of light help point to the character or separate it from there? But mm -hmm. see, it's all about that structure, and that's what this you know basically lost in a lot of ways. But, you know, besides that, um, you know, outside, outside, depending on what you want to do with your art and stuff, I recommend doing, like, lots of studies. Definitely need to um, get a little bit more uh, practice in, the, in not, not only, like, color, but lighting and how lighting works and how you can make decisions with that lighting, you know, based off of reference and things like that. Mm -hmm. And not just you, like, you know, a lot of people. Uh, but it, it it just kind of caught me out on here because the sketch was working, you know, pretty well. Yeah. And then when you kept adding and adding things to it, it was pulling it away from your your kind of tighter structure. Mm -hmm. All right, Adrian. Adrian. Never fails, Adrian. Every month, man, like without fail, you're a hard worker. Yeah, this All is right. cool. Yeah. All right. I like I like your lighting. I like uh, I like the simplicity in this. Mm hmm. Now, there's a lot of design going on in this shot that that I didn't notice at first. You put, like, the pauldrons, the cloak, the design around the neck, the head, the, the and every one of these details is all suffering the same thing. Too dark. There's no contrast in there. So yeah, th it's all of those beautiful details are hard to spot, right? It's hard to see the form. If I know Tyler well, I definitely have some cool light hitting off the back of the character to create some form and contrast for sure and bring out a lot of those details right same thing with the with the the actual market itself the other thing i would just add before tyler grabs it is having that sword overlapping the market is drawing attention away from the market when that's the actual target so i would have moved that sword out of the way so that we can actually get a better view of those vendors and that whole uh market thing going on mm-hmm yeah. This is definitely um, definitely a thing that I've noticed. Not not just with you, but I've, we said this once yeah. uh, already at least. Uh, like this is a great way to gr you know graphically block out and design your image. But mm -hmm. remember, like a lot of this, say like this whole shape, all these shapes that are in the shadow, you're just adding black to your colors and you're yeah. sucking the life out of an image. Now I'm not saying you need to go to like Pixar levels of color explosions. But, you know, there's a lot of room that you can stretch beyond those blacks. Look at an image mm -hmm. like this, just as a brief example of Marco Bucci. The only light in this scene is like that crescent shape on the green character and a little bit kind of creeping in on the two edges here. 90% mm -hmm. of this image is in shadow. Um, and that's kind of why it works really well, because he's expressing how color and light are interacting all in the shadows. If he flattened or, or made them all, you know, if he scaled and toned them back, um, it wouldn't be nearly as uh, strong. Even even like this one, right? Like the negative, that's light, and then this is light. But a lot mm -hmm. of this, a lot of this is, 70% of this image is in shadow. Mm -hmm. So I'd mm -hmm. work on, you know, I'd still, can, I, you know, like I said previously, work on your, your color theory, your, your color mm -hmm. studies, I think will help a lot. Um to, so that way you wouldn't have to put just like a dark black back there or just a dark mm -hmm. black back here and that you can apply a little more intent with them now i think like this might be a little bit of an awkward shape for your tent itself uh it's hard to see the direction and what it's kind of doing like the form like just some awkward design things like i'd make that you know a little bit more 
clear or you know obvious like what and how that's kind of working maybe a few other additional poles in the front mm -hmm. things like that um but it also feels a little awkwardly barren it's like we have like character here character here and one character here so this kind of looks like he they already burned down a tent bam it's okay, gone it's but fine. these people look like they're doing a, a general casual exchange mm -hmm. there there's some narrative things going on at this that i'm not making sense of or i'm completely just missing right because right? like this is super like that thing that, that that sucker just got burned and these people are are wheeling and dealing mm -hmm. maybe he's dealing to some not have his tent burned down i don't know but i think that should be made a little bit more clear right all right all right here we go they run uh, there's a lot of action in this one yeah very that cool. is one that's a jordan leap if i've ever seen one holy smokes Parkour. that guy's not messed when he comes down man <laughs> it ain't gonna be pretty all oh, right. cool design yeah i think the same thing that uh we had to uh, say about a lot of things it's the framing like, this is, like, a cool composition, but it's not framing the story in action mm -hmm. right, as well as it probably should. Like, um, you have this awesome character. Again, it, its design gets a little lost in what is the... It gets a little fussy. I don't know. I'd, I'd work out how many spikes are exactly coming off that thing. But, essentially, you're cropping it off at the neck. You know, the, we're back to Woody's piece here. I would definitely make this a lot bigger so we could see more of it, so we could see a little bit underneath it since we we're looking up, you know, at a lot of this information. Definitely having him upscaled slightly. I think moving him up. So you imagine, like, that whole thing is the character. And now, see where you have all that negative space, right? You could take your character here, the other guy, and move him up there. And that would be framing a lot of this action, I think. You're just a bit better. So, see, imagine him. Is it going to let me move it? Yeah. And imagine he's like up there. So, it makes a little bit, a little bit better use of that, that canvas space. As awkwardly as I chop things up. All right, what do you think, Adam? Yeah. Uh, well, we've got a lot above the guy's head. That's not really – again, you know, think about – come if back you, to that fundamental rule of thirds, right? Your characters are crammed from the middle to the bottom when you should have had them both centered a little bit better. Um, that whole top of the image we could completely cut out unless, like Tyler's doing, he's adding something up there. Adding characters. Wait, more lizard men characters can help tell you your know. story. We're there storytellers, people. we got to work on these storytelling moments. Uh, a reference would definitely help with the character. Lots of reference. Anatomically, anatomically, that both the pose and the anatomy don't work because you're trying to kind of figure out how to do a leaping character with your eyes closed or sitting down at your chair. Now, try to get up and try to feel what it would be like to actually get in that pose, look in a mirror, see yourself move, look at pictures online, watch videos, because that is definitely clearly from your head, the way the knees bent, the way the other legs out to the side, the, the angle of the body, it's not it's not a logical pose physically speaking so you want to that's why you want to reference that stuff because when you try to do it from your head you're always going to it's never going to feel real right Definitely. and you know reference the night and the armor and the lighting on that that's one of the easiest things to reference because it's it's very well documented and photographed you, know, mm -hmm. you look up a lot but that there's no sense of lighting at all uh, yeah you know, with the, no representation of the material which you can kind of get away with on something like a stone pillar where mm -hmm. it's very matte, it's very, not very reflective, and it you know doesn't necessarily throw lots and lots of light around. It, it will in direct sources. But mm -hmm. you know this is a drastically different beast of a, of a material and need to kind of own that. Uh, is, uh, is the artist, is the same artist who did those silhouettes over at the left of the lizards? Yeah. I, that was really freaking nice. Are the, yeah, these are the designs of the creature. Yeah, I would have loved to see kind of some of that treatment in the illustration. It would be pretty darn cool working with those kind of um, uh, Lemony Snicket, you know, a series of unfortunate mm -hmm. events type of uh, outro animation style art is pretty freaking cool. And you did a nice job of it too. So yeah, very cool. Right. Yeah, we got something very interesting here. Nicely rendered. Yeah, this is cool. 
Uh, and I, I could be down with, like... Red's a dangerous color to use. I don't think... Duel. Next time, name your... Unless your name's Duel. Put your name in your piece so I can... Give you proper credit. Maybe your name is Duel. <laughs> uh, you definitely need some... Uh, this isn't bad, but... I I would I would say probably handle things a little differently. Like look at even like these references. Uh, there's there's subtle color changes and shifts in temperature. That that's mm -hmm. color theory in a nutshell. It's all about balancing color temperature. With like the slight exception of like some of these cooler tones down there, everything else in this scene is just screaming very loud. Hey, I'm a warm color, and mm -hmm. it makes it feel very you know one dimensional. I would probably recommend grabbing a lot of these lizards and doing exactly, copy exactly what your reference is doing. Cool them off and make them even bigger. Mm -hmm. Everything just feels so micro, you know, in this scene. So th th this is the shape I would do and you know, cool that off. Take some hue, take some saturation, you know, add it in, make them darker, make them cooler. In this case, I'll make it bigger. Because uh, we're so far, right? We're so far removed from the scene, and that's what it it yeah. takes that drama out of it too. Well, if you look at the references on the bottom, you'll notice that the characters, although we do see them small in the foreground, they're elevated on some kind of a platform, so that pulls them up closer to the middle of the shot. They're not hugging the bottom. Uh, we've seen that a lot today, right? A lot yeah. of a lot of Putting edge the huggers. character on the border, bottom of the page or on the side, you always want to bring your character a little bit more into the shot. It's more comfortable for the for the eye. There you go. Yeah, you need to get a cool color in here. Or a neutral. Neutral even it needs. These are all warm. Mm -hmm. It's going crazy. Um, but don't be a shade. Like, I see like lots of you know, uh, concept and illustration reference here. Which is great for inspiration, but keep that inspiration separate from the actual reference. Like referencing canyons, referencing how tense and giant things could look. Um, mm -hmm. That's what this needs. And you need the solid reference. and, and Because there is a, a distinct separation and difference between what is inspiration and what is reference. And, yeah. th and then you, you won't worry as much either about stealing something else that's already been... Um, you know, done and done. You know, done pretty well from the looks of it. What do you think of this too, Tyler? Would you have brought that market closer? I, I would have. Like market, I would have. Like you know what it needs? I, it doesn't need to be close, but it needs something. Uh, s some. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Some transition, transitional yeah. elements to bring us and basically because yeah. we have the foreground now, and then there's nothing at all going in, in the midground, and then there's like mm -hmm. this at the very very end, and it's so tiny. Um, and then, of course, a, I was just watching a Noah Bradley uh, critique painting video. He just posted a few days ago where he talks about exactly the same thing. Uh, that you need that transition between foreground and background. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, but like I can be down like there's nothing wrong with having your composition like this and having like some graphic thing. I don't think it yeah. would have been the, the best choice I would have went with. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. No. Yeah. It's just, it is a big shape and it is very loud. The easiest thing that you're you're making a statement with in your scene, as long as you know, are the, these shapes. They're the clearest shapes and they're reading, you know, probably like the first thing. So if you don't want the viewer to look at that and focus on that, you need to scale and pair that back. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, wow. Uh, do we have any more? Is that it? That's yeah. it. I think we've actually gone through them. Holy smokes! Okay. So, uh, yeah, Adam and I were talking. I I think our uh, our favorites were uh, Jackin's piece. Yeah, very nice storytelling. And with the runner-up being Zenitives here. But you guys did you did great. Um, so keep in mind for the next uh, challenge: ghouls and ghosts. In a month, keep it an illustration. You guys can do whatever you want with the subject matter. It's going to um, be fun. I'm looking yeah. forward to this. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of... It's thank be you really for cool. watching, and uh, yeah, take care. Take care. Thank you.